Sana says, is it an innovation or mandated in Islam not to take a shower in the first days of menses? This is also a frequently asked question. And one is astonished. Where do people get such ideas from? Such misconceptions? And this usually is attributed to hearsay, to what the old folk who have no knowledge usually chit chat about. In Islam, we cannot accept whatever Tom, Dick, or Harry say without verifying it with the Quran and the Sunnah. And Ibn Sirin, may Allah have mercy on his soul, one of the great tabi'in. He used to say, Inna hadha al-ilma deenun. This knowledge that is delivered to you is religion. So verify and check who you are learning your religion from. You cannot come, for example, and watch a celebrity on TV or on YouTube or on a lecture that you don't know nothing of and you learn from this celebrity knowledge about Iman, about Aqeedah, about things in religion without verifying whether this person knows what he's talking about or not. So many of us are celebrities. We come on TV stations and we speak about the religion. You must verify and cross-examine whatever I say to check whether it is valid or not. How to check it? Go and check what Sheikh bin Baz and Ibn Uthameen says and cross-examine what I say. Complies with what they say or not? Do I support whatever I claim? From the Quran and the Sunnah, or it's just from thin air and reasoning and logic. By logic, this is haram. By logic, this is halal. What, what logic? Iblis had a logic of his own when he rejected to prostrate to Adam. And he said, I'm better than him. Logically speaking, I was created of fire and he was created from clay. And fire is stronger and better and, and, and much uh, uh, more efficient than clay. So how do you want me to prostrate to him? He used his logic against the Sharia, against the command of Allah. And we know what happened. So whatever you hear from the layman, whatever they do when they see a piece of bread on the ground and people pick it up and they kiss it. What are you doing? We said we, we are respecting this ni'mah. There's, there was a piece of bread on the, on the ground and we're kissing it. Is that it? He said, no, no, we kiss it and we prostrate upon it three times. Where, where did you get this from? I don't know, but people are doing it, so we're doing it. A'udhu Billah. This is an innovation. Uh, Sheikh, everything is an innovation for you guys. Akhi, it's not our guys or their guys. It's the Quran and the Sunnah. Just bring me one single hadith that the Prophet did this, Salam. There were so many pieces of bread and dates and other th stuff on the ground. Have you ever read a hadith that supports this? So no. Nope. Then this is an innovation. And why prostrate on it? Why put it on your forehead? This is illogical. So when we come to such illogical things that do not comply with the Quran and the Sunnah. Who prevents a woman in her menses in the beginning of the days from taking a shower? There's nothing wrong in cleaning her body and herself. Or do you want her to stink like a pig for four or five days so that you were, you'll be happy because she complied with your nonsense? This is not part of Islam. Yeah, it might be part of other religions, but you're in the wrong show. We speak about Islam. So a woman and her menses, on day one to the last day, she can take shower a couple of times a day 
to keep herself clean and fresh without any problem in that.